Welcome to Dinosaur Explorers. Hi, I'm T-Bone. I'm Tracy. And I'm Squawk. Come on, Explorers. Let's play in the Dinosaur Club. Best Mom This mom had kids of all ages, and lots of them. But a big brood of children didn't stop her from taking good care of her family. Click here to find out more about our Best Dino Mom. Mayasora Now where did I put those diapers? This dinosaur was such a good mom, they named her Mayasora, which means good mother lizard. Mayasora took care of her kids until they were old enough to take care of themselves, just like human moms. You'd think that such a dedicated mom would sit on her eggs until they were hatched, but at 30 feet long and 4,000 pounds, Mayasora was way too big and heavy to sit on anything without crunching it. 
So like the good mother that she was, she improvised and covered her eggs with dirt to keep them warm and toasty. Mayasara did her mothering during the late Cretaceous period. I wonder if they had Mother's Day back then. They should have. What always follows a dinosaur home? His tail! What do you think? Swim team. These marine reptiles were some of the best swimmers during the age of the dinosaurs. Even though their ancestors lived on land, they liked the water so much they dove right in. Click around and check our Dino Club swim team out. Elasmosaurus. Has anybody seen my snorkel? To be or not to be a dinosaur. Elasmosaurus sure wasn't. This 40 foot long creature was actually a marine reptile. At 10,000 pounds, Elasmosaurus, which means plated reptile, was one of the larger marine reptiles of the Mesozoic era. Elasmosaurus had four huge flippers and a long, snaky neck, making it easier for this swimmer to get around in the water. Nothosaurus. Uh, which way am I going? I can't remember. Ichthyosaurus. Hey, I found a snorkel! Why were prehistoric dentists so busy? They had so many cavities to fill in! <laughs> Flying aces. So you think birds rule the sky? Wait until you see these flying aces in action. They can fly or glide and don't even need feathers to do it. Click around to soar with them. Quetzalcoatlus. You caught me without my suit on, silly. I'm so embarrassed. Quetzalcoatlus sure had an impressive name. But even more impressive is the fact that this flying reptile's wings were about 45 feet wide. That's about the size of a small airplane. That makes Quetzalcoatlus, whose name means feathered serpent, the largest flying animal ever discovered. You'd think that such a big pterosaur would be really heavy. But Quetzalcoatlus was only about 110 pounds. How did Quetzalcoatlus do it? Was it because Quetzalcoatlus was named after an Aztec god? Nope. This flying ace's secret was hollow bones. Lampharynchus. Hey, kid. You want to buy a watch? It's cheap. A catch is a deal. You can't refuse. <laughs> hey, a flying reptile's got to make a living somehow, huh? Wyeltosaurus. You're cleared for landing, Roger. Quit calling me Roger. I'm Wyeltosaurus. Queen of England. Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> boneheads. Everyone calls these dinos boneheads because that's what they were. Some of them had hard, thick bone on the top of their heads for head butting. Others had crests of hollow bone for noise making. 
And I'll bet with all that head bone, those boneheads had a lot on their minds. <laughs> now look carefully. <laughs> Check out my new helmet. Those other boneheads are going to be so jealous. Why is homalocephaly a bonehead? Imagine if you had a really thick plate of bone on the top of your head and went around headbutting other people. I think you'd be considered a bonehead too. Homalocephaly means even head. This flat-headed battering ram pretty much lived up to its name, except that it had tiny bumps and pits all over its skull. Homalocephaly was only 10 feet long and weighed 200 pounds. It did its headbutting during the late Cretaceous period. Lambiosaurus. You can't believe how hard it is to find a hat that fits with this funny hatchet-like thing on my head. Homalo carefully. the dinosaur go on a diet. It ate a health food factory. <laughs> Horns, plates, and spikes. Any one of these reptiles would have made a great one dino army. They had tons of horn spikes and fins sticking out of their bodies. Click around to see how they defended themselves. Eucentrosaurus. And um, would you care for some ketchup on your weenie? Check it out! This dino had a really wild hairdo! Actually, Eucentrosaurus, which means well-horned lizard, didn't have any hair. That was actually a big neck frill covered with curves and spikes. Two of the top spikes were shaped like a tongue. I don't think Eucentrosaurus did much licking with those tongue-shaped spikes, though. At 20 feet long and almost 6,000 pounds, this tough dino most likely chomped on whatever late Cretaceous plants it wanted. Protoceratops. Or maybe I really look like this. Nobody really knows. Ankylosaurus. Or... Oh wait, maybe I should use my putter instead. Kentrosaurus. Now I know what it's like when something sits on me. the lost continent of Atlantis disappear. Three heavy dinosaurs stepped on it. <laughs> the carnivores. Go ahead, make my day. All of these mean meat lovers had one thing in common. They ate other dinosaurs. All of the carnivorous dinosaurs had big, sharp teeth and claws like knives. You wouldn't want to run into these meat eaters. Dinonychus. I'm the first ninja. Yeah. Dinonychus was a vicious phantom. It was alive during the early Cretaceous period. Dinonychus was 12 feet from nose to tail and weighed 130 pounds. It could maul prey twice its size and was agile and fast. One swipe with Dinonychus's powerful razor-sharp claw could slice an unlucky opponent's flesh wide open. That's why Dinonychus means terrible claw. Dilophosaurus. 
You're looking at these funny things on my head, aren't you? Huh? Go on, admit it. Well, I have absolutely no idea why they are there, but they are. Let me tell you, though, it makes combing my hair a real problem. <laughs> Velociraptor. Honey, turn on the barbecue. It's gonna my mistake tonight. Tyrannosaurus. Mmm, tastes like chicken. And Tyrannosaurus. Ooh, I just love these little things. Mm -hmm. Except when they get stuck in my teeth. Hey, you got any floss? How do you make a Diplodocus sandwich? First, you start off with two very big pieces of bread. <laughs> Dinosaur bird mimics. You might think these guys were just big birds because of their long legs and beaks like parrots or ostriches, but surprise, they were really dinosaurs. Gallimimus. Help! Hey, wait, is that an ostrich with a tail? No, it's Gallimimus. This bird look-alike was the biggest of the ostrich-mimicking dinosaurs. 20 feet long and 250 pounds. Gallimimus' name means chicken mimic, but it didn't really act like a chicken. Instead of pecking at worms, it munched on other dinosaurs' eggs. Gallimimus couldn't really defend itself well so it had to quickly run away if it was caught snacking on eggs by dinosaur moms. I guess that's why it's called a chicken mimic. Gallimimus lived during the Cretaceous period. Oviraptor. Guess what my favorite holiday is? Easter, so I can eat all those Easter eggs. Gallimimus. How can you tell if an apatosaurus is under your bed? Cause your nose is pressed against the ceiling. <laughs> the runt. These dinos may be little, but that doesn't mean they couldn't be just as ferocious as the bigger guys. Check them out. Once you get to know them, I'm not sure you'd want one of these runts as a pet. Zephyrosaurus. And in first place once again, the West Wind Reptile, Zephyrosaurus! <laughs> Zephyrosaurus means west wind lizard, probably because this early Cretaceous dino ran like the wind. At six feet long and only 120 pounds, this little sprinter was able to dart between plants to keep from being eaten by the carnivores. But when Zephyrosaurus was caught by a hungry meat eater, I guess you could have called it the world's very first fast food. <laughs> Jabalporia. Ooh, I love these things. With a little salt and pepper, cooked, raw. I'm not picky. Hedrodontosaurus. I've got three different kinds of teeth. I can eat absolutely anything and everything. <laughs> you gotta love that. Zephyrosaurus. Which 
prehistoric animals never told the truth. Amphibians! <laughs> the giants! These dinos are the giants of the dinosaur world and had to eat plants all day long just to stay alive. But that's the price of hugeness. These big guys had super long necks and tails and gigantic bodies. Everyone in this group was either large or extra large and weighed over 20,000 pounds. Apatosaurus. How do you like my new bikini? Is it too brief? Ultrasaurus. <laughs> Excuse me. Brachiosaurus. Uh, I think I stepped on something. Is it poop? Uh-oh. Apatosaurus. Why did the Kentrosaurus wear spikes all the time? Because it wanted to be a shop dresser. <laughs> Fossil dig. Brush away the sand and chip away the rock to uncover dinosaur bones. Click on the bones to pack them in your museum crate. When your crate is full, put your dino discovery together in the museum lab. was the size of a walnut. I had spikes on my tail. Stegosaurus. Excellent. You won a token to the Dino Munch game. Go back to the clubhouse and click on your dino bank or keep playing. Click and drag each bone into place. Can you guess what dinosaur you've discovered? Tasmosaurus! Excellent! You won a token to the Dino Munch game. Go back to the clubhouse and click on your Dino Bank or keep playing. Dino Munch! I 
I bet you have a terrific memory. Try it out, playing my concentration games. You can match dinos with their names or pictures with pictures. The more you match, the more tokens you'll win to the Dino Munch game. You're ruling the modern age. Keep playing. to my Shufflosaurus game. Click around to build a dinosaur or just have fun creating your own crazy creature sauruses. games. Hello there. Welcome to my puzzle games. Are you ready to have some fun? Pick a puzzle and let's play. The more you play, the more tokens you'll win to the Dino Munch game. You're ruling the modern age. Keep playing. What was Lambiosaurus's crest shaped like? Hatchet. What did Lambiosaurus eat? Plants. True or false? Lambiosaurus's skin was scaly. False. 
What could have Lambiosaurus's hollow crest been used for? Making sounds. What did Lambiosaurus's build to hold their eggs? Nests. Excellent! You won a token to the Dino Munch game. Go back to the clubhouse and click on your Dino Bank or keep playing. What dinosaur is Aranosaurus related to? a token to the Dino Munch game. Go back to the clubhouse and click on your Dino Bank or keep playing. Coloring book. Hello artists. This is my coloring book. You can choose from a bunch of different pictures to color and plenty of tools. Go ahead, make a masterpiece.
Encyclopedia Dinosaur Dinosaurs were reptiles who ruled the land between 245 and 65 million years ago. We humans have only known about dinosaurs for 150 years though, after scientists discovered their fossils. Dinosaurs came in a large variety of shapes and sizes. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. Every year, new dinosaurs are discovered as new fossils are found. Dinosaur food. What did dinosaurs eat? Well, some dinosaurs were carnivores, which means they only ate other animals. Others were herbivores, which means they only ate plants. And a few dinosaurs were omnivores, which means they ate both plants and other animals. So if a Stegosaurus saw a steak, she wouldn't be interested at all, because she is an herbivore. She only eats veggies. If you saw a Tyrannosaurus, don't offer him a cucumber sandwich, because he's a carnivore. He only eats meat. Seen any omnivores lately? Look in the mirror. Human beings are omnivores. We eat plants and meat peanut butter sandwiches, cookies, pizza, hot dogs, you name it. This is Dr. John Harris from the Museum of Natural History in Los Angeles, California. What do you think is so special about dinosaurs? They're very special because they're extinct. Uh, we really don't know all that much about them except what we can piece together from their remains. It's not as though we can go out and, and see them wandering around today. We have to look at their remains and try and figure out what it was they were doing. So it's like a, a puzzle animal, if you like. And the other thing that was very special about them is they were very big. Okay? Uh, nearly all the dinosaurs that we, we were living were, were much bigger than the creatures you find living today. So that's, that's really rather special too. So what I find fascinating about them is, is what were these huge creatures doing 65 million years ago before man ever appeared on, on the face of the earth? What were they doing? How were they living? How were they interacting with one another? Why did they die out? It's a great big question. It's a fascinating subject. And that's what I find special about dinosaurs. Dinosaur. Warm or cold-blooded. Birds, dogs, and people are warm-blooded. This means their temperature stays about the same on a cold or a warm day. Warm-blooded animals are usually more active than cold-blooded animals, but warm-blooded creatures have to eat a lot more. Snakes, lizards, crocodiles, and other reptiles are cold-blooded. This means they have to rely on something else to control their body temperature. When it gets cold outside, their body gets cold too. So they have to crawl into the sun to warm up. For a long time, scientists thought dinosaurs were slow-moving, cold-blooded reptiles. But by studying fossilized footprints, Scientists figured out that many dinosaurs, like Velociraptor and Deinonychus, must have run very fast to chase down their prey. Also, like warm-blooded mammals, dinosaurs had a special secondary palate that allowed them to breathe while eating. Cold-blooded animals don't need that kind of secondary breathing system. Also, dinosaur bones have many blood vessels. A warm-blooded creature that moves fast needs more blood. So many scientists now believe that there were both warm and cold-blooded dinosaurs. Or that the dinosaurs were really something very special. Creatures in a class of their own. 
with features of both warm-blooded mammals and cold-blooded reptiles. Dino size. Extinction. When an entire species dies, it is said to be extinct. In prehistoric times, there were mass extinctions when hundreds of different things died out together. Scientists are still trying to figure out how all the dinosaurs died. Perhaps the moving continents of Pangaea changed the climates too much. Maybe the weather was too hot or too cold. Perhaps a disease killed them, with scavenger dinosaurs spreading it. A popular theory is that there was a great disaster, like a giant meteor that struck the Earth. The impact might have sent huge clouds of dust high into the air, which blocked out the sun's rays for a long time, causing the plants to die and the animal life to die with it. Ever since life began, animals and plants have died out, only to be replaced by others. This process is part of nature. In fact, scientists believe that 99% of all the different animals and plants that ever lived have died out naturally. Today, we are concerned that plants and animals are becoming extinct more quickly because humans damage and destroy the areas where they live. What is your opinion on how the dinosaurs died? Disease, or the meter, or the climate change? Well, I believe it was probably a combination of both. Okay, you see, what happened in the end of the Mesozoic era, 65 million years ago, the climate was getting a lot cooler than it had been. Before then, it was the world was pretty tropical, the temperature was warm, it was, and the vegetation was lush and then about 65 million years ago it started to get cooler and we know that when climate changes animals have difficulties in surviving and so I think probably the dinosaurs were already becoming extinct because they couldn't cope with the climate change but then along came this meteorite and that was the straw that, that broke the camel's back as it were and caused the extinction. Extinction. Fossils are the remains of dead animals and plants that have been preserved for thousands or millions of years. Most fossils are of plants and animals that lived in water. How many years of school did you have to become a paleontologist? Well, you don't actually have to have lots of years of school to study fossils, all right? All you have to have is an interest in going out of doors because that's where you find the fossils, and you have to have a natural curiosity to find out what they are, and you have to have some aptitude at jigsaw puzzles because you don't find complete bones and complete skulls, you just find bits and pieces and you have to put them back together again. So you can, you can study fossils and you can collect fossils, you, you, you can do that, Anybody can do that, but if you, if you want to get paid for doing it, now that's a different question because there are very few jobs for paleontologists. Uh, they either work in universities or they work in museums, and to get jobs in universities and museums, then you have to get a degree in geology or zoology uh, before you can, can qualify. Old timers. Which came first, the dinosaur or the egg? Nobody knows for sure, but we do know that these guys were some of the first dinosaurs ever. They're kind of primitive, sort of like lizards, and totally cool. So check them out. Tilophysis. Oops, I just don't know my own tail strength. My feet are killing me in these shoes. Tilophysis.
Why did the other dinosaurs stay away from the duckbill dinosaur? Because it had a foul mouth!